Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome on this fourth Sunday of Advent, a time of celebration prior to Christmas. Today, the message is about being favored. This time of season, we like the idea of being favored. We think in terms of, at least I did, when I was a small child, I thought about how the biggest gift meant I was greatest favored. But living life from that point to now, I realize that has nothing to do with being favored. Yet our culture has taught us, has ingrained in us that we look at being favored as a favored status. As the favored think that, sometimes we think that they think, or we think, the favored are better than those who are not favored. There's a sense of a feeling of being left out if you don't feel favored. In this scenario, we have the potential of feeling bitter a feeling left out, a feeling that we've missed out on some of the pie of life. When we see people who are supposedly favored in this world, there's a sense of animosity that can grow. An unhealthy rivalry between the perceived favored and the unfavored. In the day of Jesus' birth, it was no different. Romans, religious leaders, tax collectors were materialistically favored. The poor, the unfavored in the eyes of the rich. There's not much different. In our world of today, if you have, you are favored. If you do not have, you are not favored. And in the biblical days, they actually believed that. If you had material goods, if you had lots of children, if you had everything that was seen as abundant, then God showed favor on you. And that's a hard thing to shake. Sometimes we joke around and say that someone, when God was handing out the brains, God left you out. Sometimes that gets said to people when we know that's not true. The Jews knew their history. They knew that there was a time when their people, when the Israelites, were a favored community among other nations. They saw themselves as better off than other nations. And they wanted to get back to that. We hear politicians, whether it's this nation or another nation, who stand to the podium and they say, we are the number one nation in the world. Favored. Fortunately, this nation has a lot of resources. But there are some nations that have even more resources than we do. 
And then there are nations who have no resources whatsoever other than people and land. I remember as a child coming back from winter break. And what did I see? My friends with the new jeans, with the new outfits, with the new clothes, new toys maybe. And maybe one time or another, I came to school with the haves. And then there were others who did not have. Feeling like being left out. I think it's time for us to reflect. Today, from Luke chapter 1, verses 28, 26 through 38. And it reads In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she was said to be barren in, is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Thanks be to God. Now when we read this portion of text, We could see that they had the idea that they were a favored people. Because it says that this son will be placed on the throne of David. And that they will be a great nation again. They will be all that they have claimed to be throughout their stories of faith. <clears throat> And it says it here. It shows us that it is here. We cannot deny it. How many of us were taken aback by the style of music of Hark the Herald that we heard today or the first song 
They were different styles, the drummer boy, were different than what we were expecting. Guess what? <clears throat> the message of the Christ child is much different than we anticipate it to be. For we see, in terms of favored status, we see that we are a people. If we are in Christ, we are favored, and that nobody who is outside the realm can touch us. When we look at this portion of the text, and we honestly see what Jesus actually says himself, It is much different. When we read this text in the light of the Beatitudes, if you read the Beatitudes, blessed are those who are persecuted, for they will be happy. That does not feel very favored, does it? Blessed are the poor, for they shall be filled. Okay, but when? When will they be filled? When will we be filled? The Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses or debts whichever version you see, or even sins. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Does, do we always feel favored when we are called to forgive? When that person ought to forgive? In our own mindset? Or the golden rule. Do to others as you would have them do to you. It's not always a good feeling of favor. If we do unto others when they are clearly not doing unto us as what we desire to be treated like. Or the seek first the kingdom of God. See, as we read that text, it's about seeking God's favor for people that they will no longer struggle. Where's the statement of we don't want to struggle and we don't want our neighbors struggling either? The Christ that we look for in the manger is not the same Christ who grows up to transform the world. What we know as Christmas traditions are Christmas traditions that we have formed out of our desire to have close families, out of our desire to experience joy in the midst of a longer periods of darkness. When Christmas is all about a favored status for all people. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that whosoever believes on him may have eternal life. Whosoever. Not just because we're born into this family or into this nationality or into this group of people. Favored. The word favored means graciously given or give graciously. 
That's what the angel is saying to Mary when he meets her and says, you have received graciously. And what is grace? Grace is unmerited favor. There is no earning it. You cannot earn the raindrops of heaven. You cannot earn the water that flows through a river. You cannot earn it. You cannot earn the oxygen that we breathe. You cannot earn it. You don't earn it. You don't go to your local algae, algae group and you say, you will make me some oxygen. Have you ever done that? Have you said, I got 20 bucks, give me some oxygen to the algae or to the tree that's outside your, your back door? You don't go out there and say, hey, I know money doesn't grow on you, but I'll make it rain on you. <clears throat> it doesn't happen that way. It's a gift unmerited favor. And if only all of us would understand that all that we have is a gift of grace, not because we've earned it. The whole world would have a different outlook. Would it not? What I have is a gift, what you have is a gift, and therefore we're happy as bugs in a rug. That's why Jesus was born into this world. Not that other uh, one might feel favored more than another. <clears throat> but that everyone would feel the sense of, hey, God loves me, God loves you, God loves you, and God loves me. Oh my goodness, let's just celebrate that. My family is no better than yours. Your family is no better than mine. And that family down the street is no better than mine. It's just not that way. Because God looks upon us all and says, Hey, you are my children. I love you. I have given you my son that you may have life and have it to its very fullest. It's not about a world where we zap one another of joy. We zap each other of joy. All the goodness that we experience in this life, it's about what makes us see, what helps us to see the wonder of God. And think about it. Jesus was born in a, in a cave. Jesus was born in a cave. Not in the comfort, not in a suite, but in a cave with animals. If you've ever hung out in a pig pen or in a uh, cow lot, some of my best memories as a child were in those places. Pretty crazy, huh? I never wallowed in the, in the mud puddle with the, the hogs, but they were fascinating. You know, having to take medicine because I was hanging out with them. But, but the idea that Jesus was born in a stall and he was placed in a feed trough where animals slobbered all over that, I don't think they got the Lysol out and said, let's get this taken care of. Jesus was born in the most earthy manner possible. And placed in a feed trough in order to show all of humankind, all of creation, how favored it is. You think you've got it bad? I was born in a manger. Can you just see Jesus when kids would get together and tell them stories and they're, they're, they're saying, well, I was born in a palace. I was born behind a tree. I was born and placed in a feed trough. I thought the cows were going to eat me. Of course, babies don't know. They just, kind of thing. 
But the idea that God humbles himself to show us how to be humble. Show us how to see life from a different perspective. To be a wandering people. Being favored is grace. All receive love. All receive the opportunity to live life to its fullest. All are given opportunity to see life with awe. We all have that opportunity to see life in awe. It's not the stuff that we create or do that make life magical, wonderful. It's who we recognize makes it wonderful and awesome. When we see each other, when we see the Christ who was born in a manger, humble means, yeah, he got frankincense and myrrh and gold. Just like the little babies today, they get all these big toys that they'll never play with until they're older. And then by the time they're older, they look at those toys and say, I don't like that. Jesus wasn't interested in the frankincense and myrrh and gold. He was interested in the souls. That's where the real gold is. And we don't get to enjoy that gold until we understand our favorite status as a people. That's what makes us gold. Jesus. If you have no Christmas tree, if you have no gifts around the, around the table, or if you never experienced that, could you still celebrate Christ? I say yes, if you understand what it means to be favored. All this is nice, and it is uplifting, but it's not a standard. Remember, Christmas wasn't celebrated in the church until the 300s, and that's only because of Constantine. And it wasn't until the 800s that it really got its traction. Easter is why Jesus was born. That we might be truly favored. What do you think? What do you accept? For this is what the scriptures teach us. Not about being favored above and beyond other people, but to accept the favoredness we have in the midst of other people. For we all and that's our race, to help others see their favored status in God's eyes. May we celebrate the coming of Christ and the joy he brings that goes beyond even our understanding. In Jesus' name, amen.